also have a bit of a confession to make to you guys. I love retro gaming. <laughs> Uh, if you've been around my channel a bit, you know I have quite the affinity for retro games, and the Nintendo GameCube no doubt holds some of the most precious memories of gaming from my childhood and early preteenhood. <laughs> and so you can imagine I was quite ecstatic, although a little embarrassed in being that I only discovered this today, that there's a little application that loads into the Homebrew channel on a Wii that allows you to actually make a digital backup of your GameCube memory card and load it into Dolphin and use your actual GameCube saves from the me physical memory card on Dolphin. Like, what? <laughs> I had no idea that this was possible to such an extent that it was this seamless and simple. And so I want to go ahead and show you guys how you can do this for yourself. Now, I wanted to let you know ahead of time, you will need a couple things to get this running properly. First and foremost, of course, is a PC that has Dolphin Emulator installed. And um, then you'd need a TV also with analog or component video input. Um, and you will, of course, need a Wii of an earlier generation, it has the GameCube inputs for memory card and controller, and of course you will need your memory card uh, from the GameCube days and your SD card uh, with at least two gigs of space would be recommended. And so let's head on over to the computer and see how we can get this process going and uh, then play some games and take a little walk down memory lane together. Hey guys, so now we're here on the Windows PC. You can head over to google.com and uh, just search up GCMM. This is the name of the application that we want to download. Uh, this does require you, as I mentioned, to have a Wii uh, that's capable of running the Homebrew channel. So uh, I'll drop a link in the description on a tutorial on how to get that going. If you already have it though, you can head over to this link, um, which I'll also leave in the description. And uh, so yeah, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to download this. And I'll just press close on that. <laughs> and head over to just the latest version, which will be 1.4F. You can download that. All right, so we're going to open that up in our downloads folder. And just extract that. Okay. Just go into the app. So here you go. You're going to have several folders. You're going to copy and paste. I mean, save for the README folder. Uh, and everything should be good. Uh, if it asks you to that you already have a folder name apps, but you're copying over another one, you can just uh, you know just put override and such. But uh, in this case, it didn't show it that. So everything's on the SD card now. Um, so we're gonna head on over to our Wii. Hey guys, so we're over here now on the Wii. So we're gonna start up the Homebrew channel, and yeah, so we're gonna go. So we're gonna click a GCMM Memory Card Manager. So you wanna load that up. And so it says use internal SD or FAT32 USB device. Now I'm going to choose SD. So you're going to click A. So once you hit this menu, uh, you're going to see a bunch of options. So what you want to choose is raw backup. And since I'm using a Wiimote, we're going to click B and minus together. So we're going to click which memory card slot. Mine's is an A. So click A and it's copying everything. And this is a really cool tool. I cannot believe that I did not know about this till today. So let's head on back to the computer. So hey guys, we're here back on the SD on the SD card. And uh, I just wanted to let you know ahead of time, you can actually also use a regular USB to rip the actual raw file to, but you will still need the SD card to load the application in the homebrew channel. So you, uh, if your computer doesn't have, let's say like an SD card input, then you can just use the SD card on the Wii by itself and then put a USB in the back of the Wii or the front of the Wii, depending on where it is, <laughs> and um, use it to rip it there as well. Um, so either way, if you're on USB or SD card, what you're going to do is go to MC card backup after inserting it in your computer, of course. <laughs> so uh, you're going to see a raw file. So it's going to be dot raw file. Now, um, it won't say memory card A. It'll probably say something else. Uh, I renamed it to memory card A so it can overwrite the memory card that was already in Dolphin because that hadn't made too much progress. But just be just something to note important there in case you already have good progress uh, in Dolphin on some of these games. Um, be sure to just name it something else like memory card B or something so that way it doesn't overwrite what you already had. So we're going to go to tools and go to memory card manager. Now we're going to click browse. Now it's going to open up usually the default folder of where the memory cards are stored in Dolphin. My recommendation is to drag and drop from your SD card or USB 
over to the folder that they're showing and put replace file destination if you want to override it or it'll probably just copy over on its own if you named it something else. So I'm putting skip because I already copied it. <laughs> so yeah, so pretty much that's that. And then what we're going to do is you're going to select it. And there you go. There's all the saves coming up. Just really cool to see them pop up like that. And it's just so awesome. It all came over perfectly. And so we're going to go ahead and demo some games now just to see a couple of examples. So we're starting off here. We can't talk uh, GameCube without talking about one of its most infamous uh, hands down most infamous uh, <laughs> exclusives ever made. Well, yep, we're talking Resident Evil 4, a game infamous for dividing a fan base and also revolutionizing gaming as we know it. And amazingly, oh my goodness, this is incredible. I'm able to go ahead and see um, that my save game has transferred over perfectly. And uh, I remember this is one of the games I put in many, many hours uh, on the GameCube itself uh, back in the day. And uh, I got, I think, I believe even the infamous. Of good things on sale, stranger. You gotta love the merchant. I mean, it is interesting that in Resident Evil 8, there's a merchant type salesman coming back. And uh, it sounds awesome. Um, we'll see. Looks like they're definitely trying to recapture that sort of. Stranger sort of feel of Resident Evil 4 in a lot of ways. I remember, yeah, I remember now. I had gotten up to the part where I was buying the Chicago typewriter. Uh, it's just this infinite ammo uh, machine gun. That, like, has a ridiculous amount of power. <laughs> like, really, really ridiculous. Wow, look at all my stuff here. I had a lot of ammunition. I think I was pretty damn good at this game. I had a lot of ammunition, a lot of healing items left over from my previous run. I... I haven't played around with the inventory in a while, so it's causing me to <laughs> need to require to move things around just a little bit. <laughs> One eternity later. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, alright, so after balancing the inventory for what seems like a very long time, we go right into the game. <laughs> You know, there's like a plethora of ways to play this now. I mean, especially on modern hardware like the PS4 and Xbox One. But it was just interesting to go back and look at the original and uh, just see my save data and uh, just mess around with the game a little bit as I had originally played it. I mean, this was the only version of Resident Evil 4 that I really put a lot of time into. I did get it for the PS4 uh, eventually, but I didn't really play it so much. I um, was caught up in some other games, but... Uh, definitely, this is making me want to revisit it, definitely, on the PS4. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Sir? I was wondering if you might recognize a girl in this photograph. Sorry to have bothered you. Freeze! I said freeze! I mean, that Chicago typewriter just took him down like immediately. Uh, the infamous line, he's not a zombie, and the beginning of a, a new era. Infamous, out of, out of the window jump. <laughs> I mean, love it or hate it, this game literally revolutionized, revolutionized third-person gaming. Um, you know, I had played Resident Evil, uh, before this. I mean, I, my first Resident Evil game was actually 3. And, uh, and then I went on to play 2 on the GameCube and 1 on the PlayStation 1. And then the remake of 1 on the GameCube. And all this before Resident Evil 4 came out. So I was a very big Resident Evil fan prior to 4. And so 4 was definitely a giant change. I knew that the, the game was going in a different, uh, the, ser the series was going in a different direction. 
So let's take a look at our next game. And here we have Resident Evil 2. I know it seems a little bit like I was going backwards there for a moment, but... Um, <laughs> this was the first time that I ever played a Resident Evil 2 was actually on the GameCube. And uh, it's one of my absolute favorites. Um, and uh, till this day remains in my top Resident Evil games of all time. I mean, uh, the remake was just so amazingly done as well. But uh, yeah... So yeah, it looks like my save data, is, save data has been very faithfully restored, including the <laughs> very funny, in hindsight, uh, action replay induced unlimited ammo <laughs> and very large sum of ink ribbon that I have here. Um, so essentially what had happened was I was fooling around with an action replay disc uh, for this game to kind of mimic that sort of unlimited ammo inventory that you get in Resident Evil 3 once you uh, get the... Once you unlock in the Mercenaries mode uh, the unlimited ammo um, case for to make all the games unlimited ammunition. But uh, if I was to try to use any of those guns now, uh, the game would the likely freeze, so I didn't want to do that. So let's take a look at our next game. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, I've played this game like crazy. I played through the both of the A scenarios for both characters, and then uh, the B scenario, I believe, for Leon. I don't think I finished Claire's B scenario, but, um, which is ironic, because she was my favorite character in the game. Uh, being that Resident Evil 3 was my first uh, Resident Evil, I fell immediately in love with the female leads of the genre, as you saw in my other video. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, oh, man, it's so incredible how the save file is just just transferred over so perfectly i did not know till today that this could be done so just well um got it. oh oh a little rusty there <laughs> um but yeah so let's take a look at our next game and you can't talk gamecube without talking about super smash bros melee i mean this game This game, I mean, this game was one of the most iconic uh, Smash Bros. of all time, and perhaps one of the most iconic games on the GameCube, right alongside Resident Evil 4. And uh, um, Smash Bros. is the one franchise that's known for selling Nintendo consoles based on a singular like that one title alone. Anytime you hear somebody's getting into a Nintendo console, it's usually because a new Smash Bros just come out. And uh, it's really something awesome to see that all the save game characters I had in my memory card seem to have transferred over incredibly. And um, Young Link has always been one of my mains, so I definitely want to go ahead and uh, choose him for this little gameplay demo. <laughs> so this is incredible. I am um, literally, Playing with my real save data from my actual memory card of Smash Bros. Melee. You know, I put a whole bunch of hours into this game, and uh, it's nice to be able to just continue from the save game that I had instead of having to start from scratch on Dolphin. Pokey Floats, oh man. I had to go with this stage for the playthrough because, I you know, unfortunately, even with all the sequels bringing back a lot of classic stages from previous Smash games, Poke Floats has unfortunately not appeared on future Smash games. Um, including Ultimate, which is really saying something because, I mean, this is probably one of the more beloved stages from this game. At least, you know, with for me and a couple buds. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So anyway, guys, uh, this, is really, um, this is really awesome. So let's go ahead and take a look at our next game. I had to talk about Super Mario Sunshine at least a little bit. I mean, for obvious reasons, it's definitely, it's the 3D Mario title for the GameCube and the second, the Collectathon series. It also, um, Dolphin lets you do something really interesting. Using something called the Gecko Code, you can actually play this game in true widescreen and with 60 frames per second. So it's something really impressive to see. And so let's dive in. And immediately you see here that the save game has transferred over perfectly. I have my 120 sunshine sprite save, which is 
incredible and uh very relieving that i don't have to start from scratch <laughs> Uh, it's like having your own version of the Super Mario 3D All-Stars remaster, and, um, albeit with a faster frame rate. <laughs> just kidding. Well, not really just kidding, because it is actually faster frame rate. But, uh, in terms of, in terms of smoothness, it's really, really solid, uh, frame rate and smoothest. There's occasional hiccups here and there, but most of the time it's pretty... It's pretty amazing uh, to see it run this way. Well, yeah, let's uh, pretty much that for this game. Let's well, there you have it, guys. That's a couple GameCube games from my uh, from my childhood, uh, from my preteen years. <laughs> um, played through the Dolphin emulator thanks to GCMM, which has allowed me to uh, transfer my saves over and relive those memories. Uh, yeah. It's pretty awesome. If you're interested in doing this for yourself, be sure to check out your, the links in the description down below. And um, if you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment. And uh, if you enjoyed this, be sure to like and subscribe. And um, thank you so much, guys. I'll see you next time. Take care.